Hey guys and gals, Bob Sellers here, your host and resident singing fisherman and wannabe chef. That's right. Whenever I say wannabe chef, that means I'm doing some cooking. Well, Thanksgiving is just around the corner. When you think of Thanksgiving, I know everybody thinks of all the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. And we also think of food. You can't think of Thanksgiving food in the South without thinking of cornbread dressing. It's not stuffing. It's cornbread dressing. And that kind of sounds like something that maybe only your grandmother can make, right? Wrong. I'm going to show you how easy it is today because I'm going to be making it just exactly like my mom. Well, she's my kid's grandmother. Just exactly like my mom, Helen, showed me how to do it. It's easy, folks. If I can do it, you can too. This is tongue slapping your brains out good. Come along and I'll show you how to do it. Well, you can't have cornbread dressing without cornbread. So that's where we'll start. In this large cast iron skillet from Lodge, I have put a, uh, a little Wesson a vegetable oil. Uh, I would guess, oh goodness, I don't know. I just, I just coat the bottom of it good and then a little extra. How about that? Now, into the oven I go with this. I'm going to let that oil get good and hot in there. Then I'll show you what's next. Our ingredients are as follows. We've got two cups of self-rising cornmeal, half a cup of self-rising flour, two eggs. Uh, buttermilk is better, but if you don't have buttermilk, just regular milk. That's what I'll be using today. I think the recipe calls for about three quarter cups, but really just do it to get the cornbread to the consistency that you like. I put about a teaspoon of salt and some fresh ground black pepper in mine as well. So two cups of corn meal, that's a half. Two and a half a cup of flour. Just whisk my flour and meal together a little bit. Go ahead and add my eggs. About a teaspoon or so or salt. I like this Himalayan pink salt. A little bit of fresh ground black pepper. Just a splash more. There we go. Alrighty. It's about the consistency I'm looking for. I've just added one of these infrared thermometers to my uh, cooking. Uh, repertoire very handy you just has a laser beam for aiming and it tells you the temperature 72 in here I want to check see what our pan is doing in here we're at 291 right now let it in there just a little bit longer 
really as long as it's over over 300 we'll be good don't want our oil to get to smoking but want it to be good and hot for the next step I'm going to give that just a few more seconds and then I'm going to go ahead and get our cornbread going here all right so get you a good hot pad because you don't want to grab a 400 degree skillet bring this over here where y'all can see a little better take some cornmeal now and sprinkle it in the bottom of your cornbread pan into that oil see how hot that oil is see it start to cook that just sprinkle it that just creates a really good crust on your cornbread who doesn't love crust and just as soon as you can after that go ahead and pour your cornbread batter into that skillet and just spread it out so that it's nice and even see how that grease comes up around the sides that's going to make that really good and crusty and good really our only other ingredients are going to be the breadcrumb from two slices of white bread three celery stalks I've chopped those up, a stick of butter, which we're gonna melt, some poultry seasoning, some sage, and about two cans of chicken broth. Let's tear this bread apart. It's not really bread crumbs, it's, it's torn up bread. And this is just pretty much a matter of mixing all the ingredients well, and then, and then baking it very easy very easy as I always say here if I can do it you can do it or my buddy chef Jean-Pierre y'all look him up on YouTube he says cooking is not rocket science <laughs> he's French I love that guy and man he everything he cooks looks like something I would love chef Jean-Pierre he's the one that showed me the benefits of using this uh, infrared thermometer oh the cornbread looks perfect 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 wow boy I can't cook cornbread without thinking of my little wife she loves some cornbread that she would love that all right that's gonna have to cool and then I'm gonna take that and crumble it up in our bowl I take a plate and just lay it down on top of it. Carefully flip, not to touch the pan, skillet. Oh boy, look at there. See how that came out? There it is, folks. If we were serving this, this is how we would do it. Homemade vegetable soup, or just with some, just with some butter on it. Look at there. Look at this piece of cornbread, y'all. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at in the south, right there. That is a pone of cornbread. A p o n e, pone. And that is the secret to good cornbread dressing. I almost left off a key ingredient, y'all. About one medium onion. I keep onion diced up and in the freezer. I just got this out, so I'm going to eyeball it. You know the deal. Anything that calls for onion, it's hard to put too much. I'm going to add our celery to the bowl. cool enough to handle. I'm going to just start crumbling up this cornbread now. Yeah. Just crumble up the whole thing. Ouch. I may need a bigger bowl, guys and gals. Definitely had to grab a bigger bowl. Melted butter. 
our chicken broth. Add our poultry seasoning and our sage, about two teaspoons of the poultry seasoning and a quarter teaspoon or so, half teaspoon. Doesn't take, you can easily overdo it with sage. That is some super strong stuff. And this poultry seasoning has sage in it anyway. One and two quarter teaspoon of sage. Well, that's not a lot, is it? About right. If you like more sage, just add more sage. There's no right or wrong, usually, to cooking. Salt to taste. And fresh ground pepper. This is something I've started using instead of just regular black pepper. It's night and day difference to me between the flavor. Love that fresh black paper, pepper. We're going to give this a good, good mix. You can get in there with your hands and mix it. Make sure that cornbread's broken up good. Now my northern friends might know this as stuffing. But as you know, in the south, we don't eat stuffing. We eat corn bread dressing. Uh, I don't know. After mixing this up well, I think our consistency is fine with those two cans because that's how I'm going to put that in a, in a Pyrex dish now to cook it. Everything in here is cooked at this point. You're just double cooking it. You kind of brought the cornbread back to just meal, which is kind of funny, but uh, that's the way it works. So, so what I'm what I'm saying by that, everything is cooked well except the celery and onions. Give it a taste. I think that's fine. I don't think I need any more salt. You got to remember that chicken broth has salt in it. I had already salted my my cornbread when I baked when I made it. If anything, maybe a little more black pepper. And I'm going to transfer this into a baking dish. All right, so I just put some cooking spray in this Pyrex dish and I'm going to transfer this into it. Go into the oven at 350 degrees until it's nice and done. And of course, spread this out evenly in the pan, make it nice and pretty in Aniana, Alabama. And there's a lady down there, Miss Morgan, sweetheart. She makes squash dressing. She adds squash to her cornbread dressing and it is fabulous. I have made oyster dressing. That's, that's not real big around here, but I've made it before. I don't remember exactly how I made it. But I think basically it's just oysters added to this dressing. Uh, of course, it's obviously good with chicken. You can either bake a chicken or buy a rotisserie chicken from Publix or Walmart or wherever. And I add to this to, and let it cook in this dressing. And uh, boy, I really like it that way as well. Hey, if you like things spicier, Put something in, add, add some more spices and seasonings to it. You can't go wrong, like I said, when you're cooking. It's whatever works for you, whatever you like best. 
put some cheese in it. I've never had that, but I, I know it would be good. You can make this into, uh, you could do Mexican cornbread and make it that way. I bet that would be good. Hey, I, I, I may try that sometime. But anyway, that is nice and, and smooth and pretty. And so we're going to go into the oven now at 350 and let this bake. As my mother taught me, until it starts bubbling around the sides of the pan and the dressing is a little brown on top. Into the oven we go. Top rack, of course. All right, we'll check on you in a little bit. It is 3.05, so I'll let you know how long I baked mine. It's been one hour. This is brown on top, bubbly around the edges. And it looks amazing. Mm -mm -mm. There it is, the finished product, cornbread dressing. Just like your grandma made it, but oh, so easy. Okay, guys and gals, wanted to show you my plated result here. Ooh, Mama can put on a deer roast. Look how that's falling apart with some potatoes and carrots and so good. Pour that on some rice and I got my cornbread dressing right here to go with it. I even made her some Mexican cornbread. Told us it's cornbread night. <laughs> but that's it. What is it, Lucy? You want a bite, don't you, baby? Oh, you want some, don't you? Can't have it. Sorry. I'm sure you'll have some scraps. All right. That's it. I'm going to enjoy. Well, I hope you'll give this a try yourself. And let me know in the comments uh, what you do different when you're making your cornbread dressing or your family's favorite cornbread dressing or whatever the case may be. Hey, as always, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button to like this video. I would appreciate that have lots of more cooking videos. Well, several more cooking videos on here and hopefully more to come and uh, upload a video. Try to at least every Friday morning, mostly fishing on here, but fishing, frolicking, cooking, camping, hunting, you name it, all kind of stuff here on Hook, Line, and Singer and always giving glory and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, folks, I am nothing. I am nothing. Thanks so much for tuning in. May the good Lord bless you. Just remember, wherever you are, he loves you, and so do I. Until next time, I will catch you later. Bye-bye, and happy Thanksgiving.